The Dark Cosmos presents An Alien is Discovered by Astronauts in Space Written by Jason Inukora Asa, a beautiful alien creature, was found in space by astronauts as a baby. They return with her to Earth, and she grows up in secret with them. She trains under them and becomes an astronaut herself. Everything changes when she joins them on a space mission and they encounter creatures that look like her. They're not friendly, and she can't communicate with them. Hey, Creepypasta fans. It's Teresa, and I'll be your narrator for tonight. Enjoy tonight's sci-fi horror story. And remember, stay cosmic. Twenty years earlier, Billions of miniature glistening stars stared at them from the dark and endless carpet of space as they thundered back to Earth. The sun hung proudly in the distance, millions of miles away, spreading out its light upon the Earth. They had earlier intercepted an unknown distress call from space, and they decided to check it out, but they didn't discover anything strange, and so they were now returning back home. What did you discover out there anyway? Daniel joked. I thought it was your idea to check this out. My idea? I was meant to have a date yesterday. Why would you ever think I would choose this space mission over my wonderful date? Kate rolled her eyes. We both know you'll choose space over anything, anytime. That's not true. Besides, you heard the distress call too? Whatever made that call was definitely not human. I know that we're not alone in this galaxy, and someday I'll prove it to you. Well, we are Earth's search and rescue astronauts. Who knows what wonders we would probably bump into on one of our random missions, Kate said. I just wasted almost one week of my perfect life orbiting around this planet with nothing to show for it. Okay, that's just terrible. Daniel had been complaining since he jumped on the spaceship, and Kate has had to deal with his constant grumbling. A few weeks ago, Daniel had intercepted an odd distress call from certain coordinates not so far from Earth. It sounded like whoever, or whatever, had sent the message was in some sort of trouble and needed some assistance. Daniel had never heard anything like it before, and the duo were sent to check it out. But after days of wandering in space, they hadn't discovered anything and were now instructed to return to the Mission Control Center on Earth. Okay, firstly, who lied to you that you had a perfect life? Kate joked. Plus, why am I- Kate, are you seeing this? Daniel interrupted her speech. Kate followed Daniel's finger and shifted her gaze toward where he was pointing to. Her eyes brightened as she spotted the strange object. Perhaps their mission might not just be as boring as she had earlier thought. What is that? Kate let out in awe. I have no idea. Daniel replied. Should we contact Control Center? Kate asked curiously. Daniel had brought their spaceship to a sudden halt and was now winding his way out of the spaceship to check out the strange object hovering in the middle of the dark cosmos. What do you think you're doing, Daniel? Where are you going? Kate protested. We don't even know if it's safe. Daniel ignored her warnings, put on his spacesuit, and made his way out of the spaceship. Be careful, Dan. Kate whispered when she realized that Daniel had no intention of stopping. The rectangular object glowed brightly, casting an emerald hue into the darkness. Kate watched from within the spaceship as Dan approached the object. She hoped in her heart that it wasn't harmful. Daniel soon arrived at where the object was, and the next few words he spoke were enough to set the peaceful atmosphere into complete disarray. You wouldn't believe what we found, Dan said calmly. He grabbed the object and held it towards the spaceship. What is it? Kate was beginning to grow impatient with the suspense. It's a baby, and it's alive, Daniel said. What? A baby? That's, that's not possible. A baby can't survive out here that long, Kate argued. I never mentioned anything about it being human, Daniel replied. Kate's eyes instantly lit up in confusion. 
What the hell was Daniel talking about? She thought. Present Day Happy birthday, Asa! I was grateful for the display of care towards me. My 20th birthday. All the astronauts and staff who knew about me were present, and they were all very friendly. Twenty years have passed since Daniel found me floating in space. Daniel had eventually married Kate, and they raised me as their own. The Space Mission Center was a privately owned space company, and everyone in the Mission Control Center agreed to keep me a secret. It's funny how time flies. Daniel placed a soft kiss on my cheek. Thanks, Dad, I let out with a smile. Daniel and Kate had raised me as their child, even though they had managed to keep me a secret, away from the prying eyes of the public. I knew that they were not my biological parents. My looks gave me away. I had grown up in the space mission center on Earth, training as an astronaut. As a child, I never really bothered much about who I was and where I came from. But as I continued to grow in wisdom... The yearning to discover the truth about my identity has increased. I hoped that someday, I would be allowed to join them on an actual space mission. Perhaps I would bump into someone like me. I never knew that day would be today. We have a special gift for you, Asa! Everyone beamed with excitement as Kate guided me to the front. It's not a physical gift, Kate whispered. Everyone present in the room chorused in unison. You're going to space! I screamed and leaped into the air in ecstasy. They were all aware of how much I longed to journey to space. I turned to Kate just to be sure it wasn't a prank. She had a wide grin on her face. It is time, Asa. You are ready. I buried Kate in my arms. I was much taller than her, but... My physique was quite similar to humans. My emerald skin glowed like diamonds, and my prominent tail began to waggle. I was going to space. Finally. The day crept in much faster than I had thought. I had a special spacesuit made for me because of my unique physique. My deep blue eyes were filled with tales of wonder masked beneath a crown of horns that sat beautifully on my oblong head. Kate and Daniel were going with me, and I was glad to have them as my parents. They wanted to show me where they had found me two decades ago. Liftoff wasn't as bad as most of the astronauts made it seem. Perhaps just for me, because the looks on Kate and Daniel's face was priceless. Soon, we were in space. Swimming across the dark cosmos. Several weeks have gone by since we embarked on the journey. And I had to admit that it was the best birthday gift that I had ever received. I felt more alive than I have ever been. We were now returning to Earth. And even though I still wanted to spend some time out here, I knew that I had no choice. Earth was the only home I knew. I wished that I was going to discover something out here that spoke of my origin. But nothing. This is Space Mission Center. Do you copy? A loud voice emanated from the radio. It sounded desperate. We copy loud and clear. Daniel replied almost instantly. We have identified several spaceships approaching your... The line went dead, followed by an odd static. We all exchanged glances. Approaching spaceships? Kate let out. Dad? Mom? Look. I pointed to several objects which sped towards us with unbelievable speed. They resembled massive, disc-like objects. Dan! Kate cried. We soon came under heavy fire, and Daniel drifted through space attempting to evade the incoming fire. Dan was a seasoned pilot, and he evaded their attacks with dexterity, but they were quite intent. I had been wondering what was happening, when suddenly I spotted something in one of the spaceships, which made me freeze on my seat. I had much sharper eyesight than an average human, 
so I could see clearly despite the distance, and I knew that I was not mistaken. Mom? I think... I think they look like me? My eyes widened in shock, and I instantly jumped out of the spaceship and took off my space helmet. I was aware that I could thrive in space because I didn't need oxygen to survive. Asa, wait! We don't know if they're friendly! Kate screamed. I didn't care anyway. They they looked like me, and I wanted to know who I was. They must have sensed my presence in this spaceship. I have to know, Mom. Our attackers stopped shooting immediately. They saw me, and one of their spaceships approached ours and came to a steady halt right in front of us. He looked very similar to me, except for the built muscles and dressing, which made me guess he was masculine. So they did have different genders too, I thought. He stared right into my eyes and gave a loud screech. I had lived on Earth all my life, so I didn't understand him. He then walked towards me and grabbed me by the arm, guiding me slowly into his ship. Kate and Daniel stared in dread at the unfolding events. Asa, you don't have to go, Kate pleaded. It's the only way, Mom. I, uh, I need to know. No, Asa, there is always a choice. Don't trust them, and uh, we, we don't even know them. I know, but they're my family. Uh, I'm sorry, Mom. The alien spaceships began to retreat from Dan and Kate's spaceship. They created some sort of wormhole and disappeared into nothingness, as they stared on in awe. Daniel and Kate soon returned back to Earth, but without Asa. It didn't feel the same. Asa was like a daughter to them, and now she was gone. They both prayed in their hearts that she was safe. Six months later... War had broken out on Earth, and it had gone on for almost a month. Asa returned to Earth, but this time, not as a friend, but as a foe. Something had changed. I was not the same person that was taken a few months ago. Earth is a beautiful haven. Compared to Valemnia, my home planet, everything was different in Valemnia. My species is an androgynous race, and I discovered that I am the queen of Valemnia. Without me to govern over them, Valemnia fell to ruin, and they now seek another planet to live on. The biology in Valemnia worked differently, and every generation was connected to a queen. The death of a queen meant the end of a particular generation. That was how they knew that I was not dead. So they kept on searching through the dark cosmos for any signs of me. Valemnia wasn't a big planet. Earth was approximately two times bigger than Valemnia. But the inhabitants are much more skilled in warfare and more technologically advanced than humans. They have discovered teleportation and time travel. And Earth was no match. Twenty years ago, another race had attempted to bring an end to the people of Valemnia by killing my mother, the queen. They succeeded in raining down chaos upon my people. But my mother had already birthed me, just before her death, and sent me to a distant galaxy. This act had preserved my race. Kate and Daniel happened to be at the right place at the right time, and they discovered me hovering in space, a new queen, to rule over Valemnia. Time passed differently on my home planet. Just six months had passed on Earth, but I had spent a whole lot of time on my planet. I learned to communicate with them. I fought like them. I thought like them. But even though I had found purpose with them, I never felt truly complete. There was a certain beauty and life on Earth that was missing. One thing was certain, though. We were going to become extinct if we didn't find another planet soon. I needed to preserve my race. Their entire existence depended solely on me. So I returned to seek a peaceful coexistence with the humans. 
But they had refused and instead captured us and began to carry out experiments on me and my people. I had spent several weeks on Earth before I was rescued by my people, consumed by desperation and rage. I returned to my planet and gathered everyone for war. I invaded Earth with everything, bringing death and destruction, and Earth was no match for Valemnia's level of technology. Today was just like every regular day of my conquest, when a familiar face showed up on the battleground. Asa, a voice echoed amidst the chaos. It was Dad. What are you doing here? Get somewhere safe! I yelled. Nowhere is safe anymore, Asa. This is not who you are. Remember who you are. We are your family. We raised you. We're not your enemy. Daniel was still speaking when one of my soldiers cracked a shot towards him. I love you, Asa. Those were his last words. No! I screamed in dread as I watched Dad's body drop to the ground. As I held Dad in my arms, I realized what I had done. Earth has always been my home. Family was not always about origin. My true family was on Earth. The ones who took me in as a baby and nurtured me. My home has always been with Kate, Daniel, and all the astronauts here on Earth. As the realization hit me, I felt sorry for all I had done. I had repaid their kindness with evil. They were never going to forgive me. What have I done? I whispered. Kate rushed to where, to where Dad had fallen, sobbing quietly. What? What have I done? This is all my fault. This, this has to stop. I knew what I had to do to save Earth. I had already caused enough death and destruction. I took out my dagger from its sheath and held it high up in the sky. The death of the queen is the end of a generation. I have to do this. It's all my fault. Dad is gone because of me. Don't, don't say that, Asa. It's, it's not your fault. Asa, there, there could be another way. Don't, don't do this. No, Mom. I realized why you had to hide me from the rest of the world when I was here on Earth. This, this is not my world. And we cannot coexist together. I'm sorry for all I have done. You didn't deserve this. I love you, Mom. Asa, Asa, no! <gasps> I plunged the dagger deep into my heart and dropped to the ground, and as I fell, so did all the Valemnians. I had to do what I believed was right, even if it led to the end of my story.